and a call to order at 634 and public comment. Better. Seeing none. There's no Steve Whitaker. <laughs> we have recording. Oh, are we recording? Yeah. Are you keep your smart remarks to yourself or recording, or we can get away with <laughs> stuff like that in there. Oh, oh, in progress. Okay, there we go. There we negative. Go. I just wanted to hear from the community. Right. All righty. Uh, no public comment. Looks like we are now recording. We're also capturing it. Yeah. Correct. Yes. Good. Um, next item of business, we're on a special meeting. So this is an ad hoc agenda. Um, just a little historical, um, what was that? The late June meeting where we rolled out the co-directors model, uh, talked about how to assess it. CJ suggested a three month, uh, point and here we are. And that puts us, you know, exactly, pretty much exactly halfway between the, um, fiscal year starting and uh, budget season in January. So it, it's a pretty sensible approach. I'm glad we have a quorum, but um, yeah, we should be able to get this done with our numbers and our expertise. Um, so next agenda item is to assess the new leadership model. And I'll hand it over to the co-directors and they can discuss um, how they see it working uh, potential, I don't know, uh, glitches, uh, areas where it really is clicking, areas where you could use guidance. I imagine you guys are giving this some thought, so I, I won't frame it too much and just listen. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's helpful to think about some uh, open questions. Um, we've yeah, we've discussed it um, very recently, and we are as enthusiastic as ever. I'd say we um, we definitely in rocking steady. You know, doing our um, uh, doing our work. You know, and making sure that um, our everything's been covered. And I, I think there was a lot of plain catch up that we we definitely recognized and identified uh, just the other day that we inherited um, some loose ends and we inherited some um, some things that just needed you know cleaned up and, and, and officialized as far as like policies and procedures and uh, things that were not completed that we had started with the former ED um, and yeah like uh, the co the compensation work, for our part-time staff raising the emergency contact form yeah getting all making sure that we have everyone's information uh grievance policy and a grievance process that we went through was a big uh was a big uh project uh, of ours um on top of you know kind of getting into the flow i'd say and and also doing the work that we do um individually and as a group um yeah, but I think we're we're very happy with the, with the way things have been going. Um, Chris, just for the purposes of the minutes, the first thing you um, mentioned was you said was it staff compensation policy? Did I catch that right? right. Yeah, we we created kind of from scratch uh, a, a way to assess and um, level up our part-time camera operators. So at this point, you know, there's the three co-directors and then there's part-time camera operators. Um, in the future, there could be other kind of positions, but the, so we've um, created, you know, a way for those camera operators to, to look at their skill level and understand, you know, where they're placed in, a, in an hourly rate and how they can level up and, you know, what kind of skills they can earn almost like points over time. So that they can, you know, understand how they can get to that higher end on the hourly rate. We did just, you know, take everybody and lift them up to the base rate, which is higher than it had been. You know, I think we went from some of the the lowest end was like thirteen an hour. So we our range is now sixteen to twenty an hour. So that was a, a big deal for us and something that we had advocated for as full time staff under under Rob and now, you know, we took the lead on that um, and made sure that that was prioritized. Um, 
Yeah. Um, I, I don't know if each each co-director is it's thought to present or Chris, you you've got you're carrying the outreach piece. Um, and then questions from the board. Well, I, I think that the other thing, and I, I'll, I'll let Zach and Jen speak for themselves too, but um, I think the other thing that we identified the other day that is, um, that we wanted to name was that, you know, we've been, I think we all, the three of us have a tendency to, uh, for lack of a better term, like overachieve and make sure that, you know, we're, you know, satisfying to our own potential, the work that we're doing. And, you know, we believe in this, this, uh, this new leadership model and wanted to, you know, make sure that we've been, you know, so we, I, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is that we've hit the ground running and we've recognized that we've been running kind of like at a sprint and that that's not, that, that might not necessarily be sustainable. So, you know, we kind of just, identifying that and understanding that there is this kind of level of there's some work that could be offloaded that we're doing that is more in the like just daily production operate operations realm that it, um could be and and we've been working on that developing uh, a, a staff member kind of lifting up one of our camera operators that could take some of that um and I, at the same time you know we've also been really excited about youth media programs and community engagement uh, things and just making sure that we're like, you know, open and, and, and available to the public and doing a, a whole lot and, you know, doing a lot of special events, doing a lot of live streaming, a lot of hybrid events, working with new nonprofits on top of like the things that we kind of inherited that we were trying to clean up and make sure that all of that stuff made sense. So I don't think that it's going to always be like that kind of going forward. We just kind of wanted to name that. Mm -hmm. Can we ask questions? Yeah, please. I, yeah. Absolutely. How do you present yourself? If I'm doing an article for some local thing like the bridge, and I want to call up and see what's going on with Orca, especially with things that are sketchy at the college, and I, and I say, <laughs> can I speak to the director? Sure. What happens? Well, we, you know, I think maybe we would let anybody know that's calling that, you know, the we would that we have three co-directors and we would name three of us and if there's someone you want to talk to specifically or if there's you know whoever answers maybe in that case would could take your your question it's usually one of the three of us are answering the phone so um i think more or less we're always you know trying to be on the same page but that we've often you know in the last couple of weeks we have to pass questions to each other and just like in any organization so so you, you sort of try to explain whatever you think level the person is calling in needs as an explanation of yeah. what the uh, structure, power structure yeah. is here. If anybody called about the, the what's happening at BCFA, I don't think we necessarily would have an answer for that yeah. because well, that's a little bit well, beyond our, you but know. It, but it might be in an article that the other uh, circular uh, news people wanted to know what the impact of what's not going on or is going on at CFA right. is on the whole community and certainly ORCA would be part of the question. Yeah, yeah, I definitely would probably, probably would let people know that we're patiently waiting. Yeah. And our annual meeting is still going to happen. Our annual meeting is happening this Friday and it's gonna be great, it's gonna be super fun. And we'll stay until they kick us out. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, yeah I think that we, what, the last update that we heard from uh, their CFO is that they are going to advocate for their tenants. We did sign a uh, a document that um, I'm going to not get the name wrong, but it's a subordination and non the torment agreement. agreement. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think it was part of our lease to like a lot of that language was part of our lease, but I think they did a new document in case like the third party. So if they're trying to get their ducks in a row about selling, exactly. they had this new document that we pushed. And then because there was a little bit of confusion around what's happening with BCFA, like we definitely sent it to the lawyers to make sure that nothing was kind of maybe not that they would sneak anything in, but we wanted to be careful mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. So had the lawyers take a look to make sure that everything was okay and that we weren't signing something without knowing. So I think that's where with the co-directors, like, you know, there are gaps and maybe we might not 
necessarily know, but we know to go to the resources like, you know, and we talked to Michael about, you know, it's, it's, we feel like we should take it to the attorney to make sure it looks okay and that there isn't anything with this real estate deal and, the, right. and those that we might be not necessarily shooting ourselves in the foot, but unaware yeah. of that. Instead yeah, of and I, th I, think, I think even under a um, traditional executive director model, you, you would have wanted to send that to a lawyer. I don't see that as a gap in anyone's oh. skill set there. Uh, and I'll and I'll add that the the message from the CFO when she sent it to us was I highly recommend that you take this to your legal counsel. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. So we were like, yeah. oh my gosh, okay, we definitely will. <laughs> so you know, and and that was that was just something that I think which is and, I guess part and of the update. You had a hand up. Um I did. Yep. Yeah, I just uh, had a couple of comments about the new directorship. Uh, one is that I think that um, the my sense of walking through the office is that there's a lot of satisfaction uh, among the directors that people feel um, a kind of empowerment and um, self fulfillment, which I think is uh, really speaks well for the for the you know the design of it. And um, the other thing is that I think having the regular newsletter come out has been um, has been good and will continue to be good uh, for outreach, but just for, you know, even within the camera operators and other staff, I think it's uh, informative and keeps things live. So those are those are two good things. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks on the newsletter. I actually, I, I don't know how often it comes out, but I I don't know if it's going to my old Verizon email from two thousand and eight or what. But um, I don't know if all board members are are getting it. And I'm glad to hear it's useful. But um, you can send out the link to sign up with your preferred email address, or we can sign you up if you don't mind. I mean, either. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah, bounce the make. link would be great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So without diving down, so I think that there's uh, uh, we we went really deep into the whole DCFA question. Without, uh, if you were to get a call, one of you. Um, that maybe is overlaps expertise or is outside of what you feel you can clearly answer. Um, is there a process that you guys have for sort of, I'll get back to you and you guys sort of circle up and do you have like a regular scheduled sort of yeah, I think deal with this sort of in, question and then get back to people? Yeah, definitely. I think it, in a lot of cases, anything that is like beyond an immediate answer is like rises to like, oh, this is uh, something that we all need to talk about. It, it would, it would probably fall on our, you know, like we've, uh, what we've discussed before is our, our regular Wednesday planning meeting is like, I think a really important one because that's where a lot of like organizational questions end up. So mm -hmm. I would say in that case, you know, if there was, you know, and we would know that at, on that Wednesday time, we were all going to like wrap our heads around something. So I think that's probably where it would end up in that um, conversation. Yeah. yeah, I'm trying to think of an example of something. Yeah, right. example. I was going to say, so we talked, there was one that just came in, this woman with the sponsorship question. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we talked about it here before, but she was looking for a donation and what, what was Orca's policy? So it was, she, we asked her, she called and said, oh, you know, I, I'm looking for a donation. I want to come in to like drop off some documents. And we're like, yes, come in, come drop off the documents. We'll find out um, what our policy is or what we can do. And then when it came, when she dropped off the packet, like we took it, but then we amongst ourselves said, we should bring this up in the planning meeting so we could talk about what is our policy about donate, giving out donations. Cause we didn't have a clear one before. So it's like, what do we, especially, from the previous board meeting when we started talking about sponsorship and we're like, okay, so do, are there some clear rules that we could use right away to answer this question? But, you know, and so we definitely are like, okay, it's a planning conversation because it, and whether it like hits on like policies and procedures or, you know, how will it affect outreach and, and things like that. And so I think that that's, we 
you know, when we feel like, oh, this seemed like a bigger question that we bring it to that planning meeting versus like the operations meeting, which is on Monday, which is just like, who's covering what? Do we need to be aware of this, that, and the other? And so I think um, because we are trying to keep communication super open and transparent and like constantly sharing emails and we have emails that we all access. So oftentimes we'll say if questions come in, can you send it to this production email? Because we all three have access to it and can see what's going on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And shared I think email. that- hmm? Shared email. Yeah. yeah. And so I think that that's where um, we've been, I think one of the efforts that we've been really- <laughs> is to be very transparent and very like open about you know this email's coming up i'm going to put it in there because we should all have access to it whether it was within you know that realm or not it's just good to know what's happening so that if something else that they came back in the door we're like oh yeah you came earlier we you know this that so i think that was something that we three all said it's important and we make it a priority so that we share this information so everyone's yep. aware I'll pick up there with just this specific question. So if I send or receive something from Orca office, that email address, is it safe to assume all three sets of eyes have seen or Jen, are you the keeper of that and you figure out who, who else ought to be in the loop? So the office email is for like administrative. So if someone has a question about their timesheet or like they need to change this. So the staff knows that they can send in any type of administrative documents to it. And so I do keep an eye on it, but sometimes I'm like, Zach, did you, you know, did you take a look at that email that came in? What do you think about this? Or I'll be like, Christopher, the email came through. And so I may prompt them because I might, I probably am in there more, but in terms of it triggers the conversation of, oh, you know, take a look at that email. What do you think about this? Or I noted that. And so in that sense, we all have access to it. Everyone's email, I think behaviors are a little bit different. So it could be that I know Zach might not necessarily look at it often, but I'll be, that's why I'll know, be like Zach, you know, this and the other, but. Um, yeah, so. I think we kind of split up some of the more like general inboxes. Like I was Kind of more regularly checking jobs at Orca Media, and you know we all kind of look at production at Orca Media, and info is the other general box. Mm -hmm. Got it. And it feels like there's a lot of really good communication and flow between you, and I, I, everything I've seen has been really positive. Have there been any major surprises or sort of things that have caught you unawares, like you know perhaps tasks that nobody knew <laughs> needed to happen, that kind of thing? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, I think that that was, you know, without getting into the like details too much about what happened with the, the grievance situation, I think that since we weren't aware, this was some, like a situation that had some history, mm -hmm. you know, we weren't necessarily aware like where to look for like mm. documentation and, and things like that, because I wasn't super clear before and, you know, um, or if there was documentation around that specific you know, mm -hmm. grievance that had history. And I think that that, I, if anything, like influenced us to, to be like, okay, well, if this happens again, we really need to make sure that there's a process for this. So mm -hmm. we put a lot of energy into that. Um, yeah. And so yeah. now there's a system for tracking if someone has. Yes, exactly. And mm -hmm. like how to go through some, you know, like a basic conflict resolution and all of those things and, and how to have outside mediation and, you know, uh, um, and what to do, fact finding, and everything. Mm -hmm. So I think it's it's pretty thorough now, and and a place for the records. So yeah, that, um, you can ref refer back. Definitely, definitely, mm -hmm. yes. And I think the other thing that's nice is like Zach kind of has the institutional history. So when we were talking about the annual meeting, it was like, okay, Zach, do you remember what was going on? Like how the annual meeting, and so in that sense, like if we didn't necessarily know, we could hit institutional memory and it could have been like oh and that gives us where to kind of maybe rummage around mm -hmm. and so it's kind of nice that it's all that we're here so that when things come up that we didn't kind of know what mm -hmm. to do with we could try to remember what was happening and then I have my little bit of institutional memory and then it's like okay and Christopher has I think like outside like the other van like other mm -hmm. access centers and so I think because we all have different I think um, skills and strengths that mm -hmm. you're able to because there have been a couple that were like what right yeah <laughs> and, and I'll, I'll add like a little uh, thing I noticed that yesterday I was excited about because you know we 
we got in this situation where I realized that tomorrow on Wednesday, um, I'm like fully booked and there's this van update that is like really important that the band, the group is trying to, um, you know, make sure that all of the executive directors around the state are well aware of some of the changes with paperwork that, you know, that all of the community media centers are going to have to fill out and some of the, the uh, legislative money requests and all of these things that are happening, what to do with the money and how to categorize it. And so the fact that I think that we had three of us and I'm like just not going to be able to do that. And I was on that advocacy committee and it, you know, kind of made sense for me to join that Jin stepped up and was like, well, I can be there, you know, so we, when we have, I think the three of us that can kind of fill in and, you know, share our brain power and mm-hmm. gather information, you know, on behalf and, of our and community. And cover for each other. And cover for each other. That's yeah. super helpful. Yeah. 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 This part we? of where the communications is, is super critical yeah. that you, every, every, you guys are all talking <clears throat> regularly so that something like this pops up. They're not just sort of walking in blind. Exactly. Like, okay. Yeah. So what is the, there's like a new system. Yeah. Um, that is true. And I think that that in the same with like the sergeant at arms conversation that we've been having slowly with Vermont public and Zach, like I think, and, and Jen, you know, have more familiarity with, um, what's been going on at the state house as far as like infrastructure and how Orca media has been involved. So, you know, them joining those conversation makes more sense there, you know, so it's like, there's certain times where it like, it does make sense to have different, uh, co-directors, you know, Mm-hmm. Are we the only uh, van organization that has a tripartite directorship? Um, as far as I understand it, so. tripart, <laughs> yes, but there are, Media Factory does have two co-directors. So there are co-directors? Yeah. So we've passed the word on? We have, and actually I had a long okay. conversation with um, Megan O'Rourke at Channel 17, which is now actually, it's, it used to be Channel 17, Town Meeting TV, but now it's just Town Meeting TV in Burlington. <laughs> And they're uh, proposing something very similar to their board this month. And hopefully they, you know, so I think they're proposing a two, maybe three co-directors as well. Did they similarly have an executive director move on or are they moving into this proactively? Uh, proactively because I think their executive director is more or less like stepping back, but still wanting to be involved. Gotcha, okay. Um, other questions or comments uh, for the co-directors on this this model and how it's functioning? Um, I, w- I was wondering about Vermont Public. How does that uh, work with you in with them in the office? How did- oh, sure. Yeah, I mean <clears throat> that it, uh, Chad and we were just kind of talking about this. You know, that came out of just a request from. David Littlefield, who is one of their producer directors for Vermont Public, and he lives in East Montpelier, and and uh, he's a friend of mine, and and you know they, he was in a situation where he just couldn't find good internet, and um, Montpelier, so he you know asked us if you know we could lend him some space, and he's been here ever since. So, <laughs> and you know, and I think it's become it's it's a nice relationship. You know, we've had different levels of conversations with Vermont public recently, whether it's around youth media with Scott Finn and Eric Ford, or specifically with Eric Ford about the, what's happening at the state house and the kind of AV infrastructure. And um, yeah, I think it's kind of, I think it's been nice for them to get, know that there is, you know, they have somebody on the ground here at Orca Media too. So, I, you know, I think that there's a lot that could be come out of that relationship so and I think that we've been talking about maybe because because he is an editor it's like picking his brain about you know how does Vermont public do lower thirds I think would be thrown around but it's like he's where I think we're starting to see, see him as a resource that maybe we can use so that we could say you know this is another group of people that do similar work and what are they right. doing that we might be able to and since he's just in the office it's easy enough to be like oh yeah what's going on over and there? he's been very generous I think with you know for example we had the homeschool class we're doing this that just started eight weeks uh, for, uh local homeschool group that um is coming in to do video production class and you know we were 
I was a little rushed kind of going into it and Dave blended his support and created a little worksheet for them right away. And we, you know, we had, uh, I think it was a nicer, nice, nice to have that in, in addition to what we have prepared for. And same with like figuring out our productions and post-production time. And as we, you know, do things beyond gavel to gavel, kind of understanding how much time goes into editing with, you know, traditional like PBS packages type of things that we might want to do for nonprofits. Dave is definitely an asset there. Mm -hmm. Great. So is that space rented to him? No, it's it's in in kind. Uh, it's he's just there. So I think that he's offered to you know have that conversation or, or try to you know allocate some money. And I think that they've been open to it too. It's just nothing has been official yet. Formalized. If something happened where he was allocating money, um, <clears throat> this, who is it among the tripartite directors that decides what that means about our 501c3? You know, and so that's where that's why I think we've been holding off and making anything. It would be a conversation of like the subletting within the lease. It would be like you know if he is. What, how big of what type of relationship. So I think that's where it's one of those conversations and then whether it's like, you know, and I think it's a conversation of, is it policy and it's just like strictly looking at the lease? Is it more about outreach? How do we leverage this relationship more? And so it's like, we get like, and I think that's where we are now is like we're leveraging the relationship and trying to get us in a relationship with them. and. So that's where we're like, you know, it's no, we're not using the space. It's fine for you to use the internet. And so, but then at some point, you know, it might be that it's a conversation that we have that we're like, okay, we're ready to maybe start charging because we've got all our ducks in a row. We looked at if it's going to make a difference to our standing. Is it going to make a difference to the landlord? Is it? And so I think, uh, whereas right now, and that's where we're like, you know, is it also, is there an immediate need to make the, this relationship super formal. So right now it's like the monies that we would be getting from him. I think we're like, okay, it's not quite, we're not making it into a revenue stream yet. And so we're just like, okay, well, let's just look at all the different things that can come out of it. And if it is the barter, like, you know, services in kind that we're kind of getting from him that- Yeah, I think it's, it's just the relationship with them is really good right now. Just I think it's great. It. I'm yeah. very excited by it, but uh, I also know how many wrinkles there can be. I mean, you say, you know, you talk to our lawyer and it looks like we shouldn't be taking money for this place that we rent, but <clears throat> we can take in-kind services and that won't violate tax policy or it's 501c3. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if he wants to have public provide a similar kind of service to some of our coverage of events in Burlington or even here, um, I'm, those are the questions that are just yeah. hard questions. Yeah. Uh, just on that, do, does... Does anyone know if our lease allows for subletting? Offhand, I feel like I don't remember exactly, but I feel like it was a no, but I don't remember the exact language. And I feel like I think where I was hesitant about bringing a subletter in is that this whole the BCA environment seems a little bit unstable. And it's like, so I just like, I don't, you know, even if it's specifically said in the lease, no, you can or can't, I was like, I don't know that I was wanting to risk it. And because it wasn't super necessary, that revenue to make it official, yeah. I felt like, well, you know, we can have them take up space that isn't getting used already. And until, you know, things maybe stand out about the, what's happening with BCFA or yeah. if we need. Yeah, and it feels definitely like a friendship, you know, between the two organizations that mm -hmm. is formed through you know, just Dave needing space. So I think that's really opened the door to a lot of other conversations. Great. Other questions, comments on the uh, sociocratic model? Well, um, what about with uh, Eric Ford? You say that's mostly about what's going on at the State House, or what kinds of conversations um, have you been having? Right. So Eric Ford, um, he and I uh, initially connected around youth media programs and what, you know, Vermont public could do 
as far as like um, they were interested in putting resources into youth media education. Um, I think part of what I understood was that in their strategic plan, they need to make some kind of decision about where to put some resources into the next couple of years. And they haven't necessarily made that decision. So like youth media education, connecting with schools, doing residencies, doing more uh, programs around youth media is like one of the considerations. Now, one of the, the things that he said initially to Van and to, and to me was that um, they want to, you know, leverage the fact that we have physical space throughout the state. And so connecting with community media centers seems like a really smart part of that decision. So if they were going to expand into youth media, you know, their stories from every corner is their new, you know, uh, motto. And so they're trying to be more actively around the state without putting any investment into like physical spaces. It makes a lot of sense for them to be like present in community media centers somehow, or maybe they, they're, they're helping support programs that already exist, creating ones that don't in certain, you know, a lot of, I think the general consensus was that a lot of the uh, community media centers have not had the resources or capacity to put any time or people into youth media. So um, having said that, the next kind of conversation that came out of that is he's also leading an effort to just figure out what's going to happen um, with coverage of legislative events that, uh, at, you know, there's some logistical things that are, they're trying to figure out. I, I think they had a live line to the Senate, you know, floor to the, to, to the chamber. And so things have changed. They're trying to figure out what they're, what is needed, what they want to ask for. There's some money, obviously, to put into AV at the state house. And so I think it makes sense for him too to connect with Van and Orca Media as far as state house coverage goes to find out what it, what are we asking for as you know collectively and it, do we all need to be in the same room? Do can they pull from an Orca Media feed? It, you know, what is it gonna look like at the state house? Yeah, I, I think it, the other I, thing that interests me about him specifically is that he's um sort of uh, heading up the Made Here project, and that could have some connection to the content that Orca produces. I think yeah, Chad it was actually at, it was at, at, the, at the Made Here uh, uh, festival that uh, I was telling Eric to reach out to Orca here because they were Eric and um, Scott. I was having a conversation with them mm -hmm. talking about this exact issue. Um, so I'm glad that, you know, there's some progress happening on that, but it's just before the, uh, um, the changeover in oh, right. the leadership. So mm -hmm. it was like a bit of treading water after that. And also there's in the, uh, <clears throat> made here is always shifting into a whole new arena right. with the kid film thing. They're now having a whole series of, Kid made films. Well, th what they did was, yeah, so actually, this just happened last week that Vermont Youth Documentary Lab is going to get uh, $100 because they got licensed through the, since we were part of the Freedom and Unity Youth uh -huh. Filmmaker uh, program that happened in White River Junction. The Made Here has like licensed that whole three hours of youth filmmaking projects yeah. from White River Junction. Mm -hmm you know, to syndicate or whatever, to license to their channel. So they're going to give every filmmaker from that contest $100 to, to license it. Yeah, so that's a whole other thing. And yeah. it's exciting. Yeah, it's On awesome. the other hand, it opens up a whole series of things. Vax or no vax, restrooms shared and not shared, pronouns given out or not given out, creative racial theory talked about in school with mm -hmm. parents angry outside, you know, you talk, gets that. Yeah. So I'm just thinking that once you you start dealing with kid stuff, oh, yeah. it's wonderful. On the other hand, it opens up a whole Pandora's box of what the parents do and don't want to have happen for their kids. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, that's something that we've been to. I was going to say, Christopher has brought up, like we've been talking about professional development and especially around youth and maybe one of the priorities, especially if we're doing more youth programming and more youth activities, that we all start to think really hard and prioritize you know some 
professional development around youth mental health, youth um, suicidality. Yeah, so that's definitely has come, like Christopher has sent an email to all of us and said, you know, these are these these are some topics I think would be beneficial for us to start looking at. And I think that will be, I think professional development's always been something that we, whether we didn't have time or it wasn't pushed or yeah. wasn't something that was kind of pushed forward. And I think we all three are like, yes, we think professional development is definitely important. Right, and I'll just kind of like tag on to that. I did have like a reflection uh, conversation on the Vermont Arts Council grant that we didn't receive. And, you know, Amy Cunningham said, you know, as you're going into a strategic planning project, you know, keep in mind, it's like, you guys are, you're doing a lot of this work already, like serving in under-resourced communities, serving low-income folks. It's like, but it's really important to, to use that language and say that you're doing that, you know, and, and recognize that like you do that and you're doing that because you want to do that you know so I think and part of like professional development is like yeah it, you know it's like that understanding who we are as an organization and, and who we want to be you know five years from now and and using that language I think also having that under our belt it says that we, you know that to show that we've gone through like just regular diversity equity inclusion training that we haven't done yet you know so I think that's important mm -hmm. Any other questions or comments on this um, co-director's model? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> they well, sure have a lot of ideas. <laughs> yeah, there's some good directions being uh, suggested. Um, I think if we are, in terms of just the conversation about it, ex have exhausted it, I've been thinking a good way to memorialize um, sort of approval of this model would be um, if someone would be willing to um, make a motion that we authorize the co-directors to build the 2023 budget around this model. Does that make sense? Just kind mm -hmm. of as a way to say, yeah, this is, let's lock this in. I'll, I'll make that motion. Okay. I I hear um, Dave making the motion to authorize 2023 budget to be um, built around this model. I'll second it. And Rachel Jesus. seconds. Um, and I actually got to type the minutes on that. Any, any uh, further conversation on that? Or I could call a question. Sounds like I'll call a question and Rachel seconds. All those in favor of authorizing the co-directors to build the 2023 budget around this um, co-director model, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. And oppose. And that's unanimous. Great. Um, that moves us into uh, the circles conversation. which I don't know if, you know, um, just barely a quorum turnout. I don't know if you guys were hoping to assign all nine and there's five of us here or, uh, yeah, if you could just share what you hope to accomplish this evening and what we can accomplish given our just barely a quorum numbers. Yeah, do you want to say? So I was going to say, I, it would be lovely if everyone here we could assign to some circles. Then... If, um, and then those that it's like a little bit like, you know, if you weren't there for the PTA meeting, you get trash duty. No, but we could um, just give the opportunity. And then if there were, for, and then we could reach out to those that weren't here to say, you know, would you like to join up and hopefully now get it to more of like, we would like to sign you up versus we would, would you like to join up? And, um, and I guess it comes, the circle conversations could be like if there were any questions or if there was any concerns about time commitment and what is, I guess, expected versus it would be, I think we would love to use the board as resources and their expertise in various things to try to help answer questions that we might have about policies or as we start speaking strategic plan to start having smaller 
focused conversations that maybe it might be easier to have outcomes that can come out of it versus like sometimes with the bigger meetings. So I think that's kind of, an, we kind of divided it up by our, our skill set, so to speak. And so I think for here, if we, if we could sign up people or if anyone had questions, I guess also but, that this is the opportunity that if there was questions about things. We were thinking like three per cert board members per circle, but not necessarily everyone. We're thinking not uh, everyone's going to be assigned to something. Well, so I was going to say, I thought, right? Like not every board member will be assigned to, or every board member will be in a circle. Yeah, they might not be able to. So that would, to yeah, so that's the other bit is if anyone cannot commit to being in a circle, I guess that would be a conversation to have as well of if whether that's the time constraints would not be able to do it or they, you know, I'll, I'll sign up, but please note that this is, you know, I wouldn't be able to. So I think it's, a con you know, so we were hoping to start the conversations and see if anyone had questions or mm -hmm. were, so each each of these circles, each of these yeah. circles would be um, called together when the um, sort of co-director within that circle or identified a task. It wouldn't necessarily meet okay every other month or you know third Thursday or it would be um, something that the lead co-director would would say, would gather up the troops and say, here's what we need to do. Uh, can this circle meet to um, figure this problem out or answer this question or perform this task, correct? Like yes. As needed. That's as the needed. design. Yeah. It's a lot like the you know, other boards that have had committees, but it feels a little bit looser and a little more informal, which is, which is I think, kind of nice. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can kind of just develop a relationship and lean on each other a little bit. And I've already come, I, I, I feel very comfortable joining the policy circle. That's exactly the kind of work I do every day. So I'd love to be part of that one. Great. I would think that I would think that I would be outreach circle. I'm already sort of doing that anyway, that stuff. And it sort of feels like my wheelhouse. I was like immediately like the office of the chief. I looked at I was like, oh God, anything the policy. <laughs> yeah. so, that sounds yeah. great. It's, that's great. Yeah, I think that outreach would be a good one. I'll, you would think facilities, since I have production and post mm -hmm. experience, but most of the stuff on the facilities list, I don't know all that much about. I think the policy stuff is something we it's like a higher priority. Yeah. It sounds like that's where you've had to do some catching up. And, mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's correct. And, and we're looking at actually like every week we've been looking for it, and it's just like outdated on some right. level. Yeah, it even, just needs to be yeah. refreshed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm happy to, and I, and I do have the time to be a little bit more hands-on involved um, in one circle. I wouldn't be able to commit to more than yeah, that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and did we say that if, if, if a board member was enthusiastic about being on two circles? I, I don't see why not. Yeah. I don't see why not. Okay. Okay. I don't have the that sheet in front of me, but I did notice that there was one section about the Green Mountain Film Festival. And I think I'd be interested in that. I don't know what section that Oh was. yeah, where would something like that fall? Would that be outreach uh, facilities or policy? Probably. Yeah, that's, that's in the kind of the detailed view of outreach uh, where we just name a few potential projects. The Green Mountain Festival is in there. So is, it sounds like, Sue, that was an outreach volunteering? I guess, yeah, I could do that. Okay, great. Um, Dave, any, any thoughts or preferences? I would think that what we'd be trying to do is find out what the strengths and credentials of the board are. And um, I'm staying away from uh, all things that have to do with technology and equipment. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was just thinking Carlos would probably be a natural for that one. I don't know if, if the co-directors have batted that one around. But, but not, I, uh, to, not to volunteer him when he's not here, but yes, match up to interests and expertise. And I'm, I'm very interested in outreach, um, and I'm, but I'm also interested in advocacy and uh, 
I'm not interested in fundraising because I have well, four organizations that I'm supposed to be raising funds for. <laughs> and they're all good organizations. But I'd want to get conflict with fundraisers. Mm -hmm. So I think with the fundraising, we were thinking that you're so if you're very involved in fundraising, it's like your knowledge of right. this, you know, and not so much that we would have you, I mean, you could always fundraise, but we would want to delve into your your brain about, yeah, you know, pick your brain. Yeah, about fundraising. So it sounds like even though you don't want to do it, I think your skill set would fall in that outreach because it looked like it was advocacy. Okay. Then I'll I'll stay with outreach. Yeah, that's great. So we have <clears throat> three. Um, I guess if I if I were on policy, that would round us out to three there as well. <laughs> New one. Check this out. Right. Sorry, what were you saying? Um, I I just I I'll throw my hat into the policy ring if outreach looks like it's all rounded out. Wait, who's on outreach? I got was it Dave Chad and yeah. yourself? Yeah. Okay. And I was going to say, if if you want, I mean, we did these rough numbers, so it could be like if outreach could have four people, it doesn't have to be just three. And sure. I think it's, so. If it turned, we were just being like low, low. Bare minimum. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Like, name a minimum, right? So we can put you in the outreach too, Mike, if you want. Um, I mean, I, I get. I'm probably default in the executive circle. And we haven't talked about that one, but that's a purely board member thing. Right. Um, so between that and policy, I think I'd be all set. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the executive circle, if it's not clear already uh, to folks, is that, you know, that one, um, oh, it does, it is defined a little bit in the, the overview. Um, you know, that is a place that makes sense for, you know, I guess the most similar thing would be like the hiring committee that exists or the HR committee that currently exists. Whereas anything that is like an evaluation of the co-directors, you know, uh, that a point person for grievances um, outside of the co-directors, things that would make sense for would it just be board officers? Would yeah, exactly. So just, the, yeah. and we said three, seems like a good number, but it could be more as well. And I don't see that one necessarily, you know, that's also meeting as needed. Yeah, yeah hopefully, hopefully there wouldn't be meeting too much. Right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I think, you know, there would maybe be, an annual evaluation if we decide to do that. Yeah, I guess I guess co-direct you you would you would uh, eval on um, staff, but co-directors would be evaluated by this executive circle. Is that? Yeah, that's what we probably the the most regular thing they need to do. <laughs> All right. Well, I think I'm on the hook for that one. So. Any other board members have interest in joining the executive circle? Or well, you just mull it over? Officers, the board officers. Yeah, we could just we could just say it's it's uh, chair, secretary, treasurer, and there there you have it. Yeah. And then yeah, not naming names, but naming, but naming roles. Mm -hmm. that, feels, that feels right, yeah. And I would uh, be glad to be a ad hoc representative whenever there's conflict, since I've dealt with almost every possible kind of conflict. Great. Um, well, we have done the work of, of uh, present board members um, volunteering which actually moves us uh, to board officers, which I requested to be put on this um, agenda. So our bylaws state that the um, board meeting following the annual meeting open house is when we elect our officers. 
So I would just like to take the pulse of present board members uh, as to um, their interest. Um, and I'll just, I'll, I'll do the lay of the land. Um, Carlos has been uh, secretary for, I believe three years, minute taker. Um, and he's looking to get out. So he doesn't want to be nominated so we're, we're, we're just kind of framing and, and uh, for the meeting following um, open house, which will be, I think it's, is it October 24th, but October in the 20s, that's when we are by bylaws um, required to elect our annual officers. So that, that secretary position looks like it's in flux. Um, I'm, I am uh, happy to remain in this role as chair, but also if like, it's been, you know, it's been a time suck, especially this summer with the grievance policy and other things. If someone is really curious about and have some ideas about taking, um, taking the chairship, I'd be, you know, I think I'm on year four or five. So um, if, if anyone wants to make noises about, yeah, I'm, I'm curious about it. Tonight would be a good night to just lay that groundwork. And I can think about getting out of the way, but also happy to continue. The other, the real probably sticky wicket here is um, uh, Mike Doyle has been, you know, very graciously staying on the board. But I think we're in year two of making noises about like, I'd, I'd, I'd like to step down and retire. I've done my decade plus service and um, uh, got Rachel Feldman up to speed. Uh, to be the heir apparent, but she hasn't been terribly present. So I'm not sure what to do with that. Um, so that's the lay of the land. And if, if each board member just wants to go around and share their interest in or thoughts on any of those positions or dilemmas or, and also maybe hearing from the co-directors too, but that's why I wanted this to be an agenda item tonight, because I think there's some, we're in a, we're in a bit of flux. So um, those I, are the, go I'd ahead, be, Rachel, yeah. I'd be willing to take on the secretary position to give Carlos a break, because I know how uh, challenging that can be. Uh, but if anyone else is eager to do it, I'm, <laughs> I'd be happy to step okay. aside. Okay, you, you may have multiple nominees, but thank you. Yeah, if there's other people who are interested, I, I, I would be happy to let someone else take it. Yeah. Sure, sure. Um, but, as, yeah, but as for the, the, I know how difficult, I'm trying to find a, a replacement treasurer at the library, too, so. Uh, really, okay. Uh, Thank you. Um, any other thoughts or um, interests in, um, if we, yeah, I guess we just hear, if each board member wants, just wants to chime in. Um, and you don't have to self-nominate. You may just have a thought about the treasure dilemma or anything, just, and then uh, we can move it along. But I, I just did want to just take the pulse of. Yeah, of I think about Rachel as treasurer, I think she's got a, a very prominent um, daytime job and um, is very, very busy and it would be a really great idea to find somebody um, new to welcome to the board and to take, you know, specifically to take on that position. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're actually looking, uh, trying to find a treasurer or board member also, <laughs> something else, because I'm not good at the budget stuff uh, either. And then when we hand out that section of the, uh, of, yeah. of the minutes, my uh, it's like the the great the white noise <laughs> comes on in my brain. <laughs> so, yeah. sure. it's hard to find those people. Yeah, mm -hmm. who? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm hearing this just may be the need for a, a recruiting of a, a fresh new board member who's got like that skill set. Yeah. Okay. I'd be happy to, you know, make a kind of public announcement on our channels if we do agree that you know that's what we're looking for a specific you know type of board member or just that we're open to looking for board members would, right would mike uh apprentice somebody 
Mike uh, Doyle, right? Or, or Mike uh, Doyle. I was wondering yeah. if besides requesting to find someone, right. we could also say that the current person uh, you know, has done it for 12 years or whatever, and uh, would be glad to help uh, inform and, sure. and, and and also advise a little bit as he got used to or she got used to doing the job. Yeah, that's a great idea. I think I, I'd be more willing to join if somebody was, you know, willing yeah. to join. Yeah. Now, the co-director that would work most closely with the treasurer would be Jin in terms of responsibilities. Mm. Is that correct? Mm. Yes. So, um, go ahead. Well, I was just like for institutional history. So with when Rachel was first asked, was other board members asked and they said no, or was Rachel the only one asked? And so it's like, for those that aren't here, like CJ seems like she had some, she was looking at EC fibers monies and I didn't mm. know that, that was kind of asked of her and she said, no, don't want it. And so to ask her again would be kind of bad or if. So I don't, I don't think she was yet on the board when that sort of beginnings of, of uh, tapping Rachel to be the heir apparent was, I, I, I don't, I don't think Rachel was asked and I mean, uh, CJ was asked and said, no, I think it was, um, it was either prior to CJ joining or um, it was just much less formal and, and that Mike Doyle and Rachel talked and he like introduced, I think he introduced her to like the Edward Jones people. She may be able to sign off on some things. I think she was kind of like one third or one half of the way to being kind of fully in that in that position um and then jen i don't would you mind just trying a little outreach with rachel to just see if she's like a clear sorry can't or yeah no i could but could i leave board meetings early after i present the treasurer's report like i don't know if there is any you know um potential would you mind just that that yeah, conversation I Yes, I will reach out to Rachel and see um, and try to see what's what's the pulse of there is. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah, because I don't want to assume too much, but um, that just does seem to be like the the handoff that isn't complete or where is it? Um, that would that would be great if you could do that. Appreciate it. There and was then, right. Maybe the next obvious ask is CJ. Go ahead, Sue. Oh, there was that guy. I. I forget where he was from. He was one of the, he presented a financial um, program to the, to the board. And Edward Jones, he, right? he was from Edward Jones. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's a kind of a conflict, but he also had been a Broadway show performer. Yeah, 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 right. He had media yeah. interest too. Yeah, so he seemed like a great guy. Yeah, I'm very yeah. familiar with it <laughs> with our account. Yeah. <laughs> He and I have been playing phone tag like for more than a month. Yeah. Um, and I just, I finally just left with his secretary like, hey, do you want to come to the open house? So he may pop up at open house. Yeah. Um, and he may have a lead actually. He, he would be a good source for a lead. Mm -hmm. um, if there is a conflict of interest, if you want to, you know, we got a couple ifs here, but that's a good thought. Yeah. Is it Mark? Is that his name? Yeah. Okay. And he, he he presented on like green and clean um, investing, right? Mm, That's yeah. the guy you were thinking of, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Which is you know that would be a nice direction for us. Mm -hmm. Did I hear the beginnings of another thought? Did someone? I was talking about him interning with us because he knows Mike. And Mike and he can talk to each other. And so that while we look for Mike's replacement, he could also be the bridge to uh, getting the stuff done that needs to be done for a while. I'm thinking I mean, they can't be apprentices to each other, but Mike and he talk the same language and cover the same investment. Yeah. And so it might be that we have an interim search and that those two cover things while we while we search. No, that's just a um, I'm just trying to capture some of this. Any more thoughts on sort of the, the, the 
moving the deck chairs around here and uh, the board officers when we reconvene in October. If not, I was just gonna mention, go ahead. Um, sorry, would it be worthwhile to include in our announcements on Friday? Um, that, you know, if anyone's interested in governing our organization, we're always looking for, you know, one or two, you know, willing board members to join up. I, because I, I, I was also curious, our, our maximum number in our bylaws. Yeah, I was just thinking, we're at our max, we're at nine. Is the okay? And so they have they have to live in our in our service area. Service. Yeah. In the service area, yeah. I believe yeah, I mean, the bylaws say um, between seven and nine. I think we have wiggle room, but I think we're topped out right now. Yeah. Um, so it would either be a bylaws change, which the way it's designed, uh, three readings and three meetings takes six months, or uh, a vacancy. Yeah, so maybe we'll hold off then on announcing anything at the annual meeting and wait. Yeah, for I'm just I'm just glad the conversation's like starting. This is just easing my mind. Um, <laughs> and thanks for the good thoughts there. Um, so uh, strategic planning, you guys have shared and then shared again the uh, document from Nathan. And I guess the sort of nitty gritty on that is what is it, page? The page that says 450 a week, 200 a week, 1900, 1800, 600. Um, he's suggesting 90 minutes a week. Yeah, uh, the people had a chance to chew on his strategic planning kind of um, offer, offer to support and structure. I just felt like it was really expensive. Yeah, that was striking to me as well. Yeah. And, and, that, and that it was, you know, f the finances forward sort of, it, it was more his interest in how he was going to get paid. As opposed to the nitty gritty of the offering, like what, what yeah. you would have on the other end. Yeah, well, just that he had so, you know, self-interest in in what he was proposing do, not, do, not his that his ideas were bad at all but right just who he was as a person do co-directors know how he charged for his prior work like was that last winter or um so he hasn't charged us anything at this at this oh okay so there's been some courtesy supports <laughs> And I'll just comment uh, or speak to what you just said, Sue. I think that the reason that we are seeing numbers in this kind of like menu is because that's that is what we asked for. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So I think we we had I think a, all of those conversations were were a more thorough kind of understanding of the package that we were like exploring, right? And what we and what our needs were as an organization. I'd say a large part of him handing this to us was like us wrapping our heads around how much is this going to cost us and what kind of you know timeline is this going to be i think that this kind of section one is not so much applicable anymore and that's what we're talking to him about so it sounds like we would you be say section one is that number one on page three yeah. and the pages are numbered but it looks like it's page three that's right yeah so i think that We've at this point just held off until mm -hmm. after this meeting. There's skinny Should, numbers. Yeah, there's. Oh yeah, there's yeah, numbers. Are, just, they are. <laughs> oh, it's uh, in. The, are they actually numbers? Those tiny skinny, skinny numbers. Yeah. So oh I, yeah, I, there I, it is. Yep. <laughs> um, actually, point of clarification where he has in bold E four fifty a week, F two hundred a week. Is that an either or? Like E's the more robust option. F is the less robust option or is that a both you know what i mean right i think um like i said i think we kind of have to talk to him uh he's expecting some kind of follow-up after this meeting so we need some more clarification on that um 
what is going to happen first. And I think that that 200 is the less robust option because okay. we okay. did. So that is an either or. Similarly, yeah. on two, there's an E and an F, 1900 and 1800. Mm -hmm. Those are either ors, or you could sign up for the full retreat and the three two hour, two or three hour boards. You know what I mean? Those are also. The or that's how I read it. That one or the other. Okay. Yeah. So it'd be. I think that he did try to have it very chunked up so that they were like we could like not have to take everything, but like right. look, because we also told him we weren't sure what was going on with you know they're still evaluating us. We're not sure what the strategic plan plan is going to yeah. be, and so you know if he could offer us all kinds of different menu item type things and at mm -hmm. different levels, like whether it's not a lot of support or what would a lot of support look like. And so I think that's why it's there's so it's like we wouldn't have to accept all of this. It'd be like we would pick and choose what pieces we thought we might be able to use. Mm -hmm. So and it was, you know, and how how involved we wanted him to be, because even that we weren't able to say we really want you to head the strategic plan part, or we might just need you to help us guide, you know, figure out a plan. So I think that's where that's why like number three is like the 600 where it was just kind of very sketch of he would just provide some support while we came up with the most or you know most of the strategic planning process. So I think um that it isn't like yeah it isn't everything it's just which pieces we think we might like the board might want to do in terms of strategic plan. <clears throat> And I didn't know, I think part of that institutional history also is what strategic plan things have been done with or ORCA. And it was, you know, so I think because we remember Rob saying like he'd been part of some strategic plans that were really not bad, but ineffectual or nothing really yeah. came, mm -hmm. kind of came out with it. So we were like, we weren't sure if the ORCA board had done stuff or if we needed to build something super robust mm -hmm. or it was like old hats for for the ORCA board that were like, oh, you know, this is, we just need kind of bare minimum stuff. I think he, you know, it does cost money if you're going to bring in a consultant, but if you don't, then it's going to cost just right. as much in your time and, you know, those resources. I know I'm, I'm in the middle of a strategic planning process where we're not spending a lot of time and money on a consultant and it, it's a lot of work on the on the strategic planning committee uh so i i feel like it's it's probably it does to me the the numbers i'm looking at especially two and three as being kind of the areas where mm -hmm. most likely you'd want to spend that money and it doesn't it doesn't to me seem that bad at, now that i've gone through right. three months of constant strategic planning <laughs> meetings without a consultant so i i think it's it's kind of not a bad deal that's helpful to hear. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Well, like, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say that I like to give uh, this organization uh, credit for the strategic plans that it's worked out ever since we moved from downtown, came up here, worked out a plan, worked out a schedule, taught classes to high school students, opened up the facility, maintained an archive. Uh, and then dealt with tripartite administrative uh, figure. Uh, and I'm, I'm trying to think, what could I have done for $175 an hour for this guy that we didn't do already ourselves? Well, yeah, I, yeah, Dave, Dave, you make a great point in that, like, we've actually kind of moved the ball in multiple realms uh, successfully without sort of pre-game planning it out. We've had a, a, a series of kind of ad hoc fortuitous movements that in retrospect look like really good strategic planning but it, it wasn't like we were following this five-year plan right. and um you know i don't you know if, if we've just we been catching a wave um ride it out or actually no let's get someone to formalize this uh but but excellent point i mean i think we we have we are we're not a stagnant organization So when you when you're doing a strategic plan like this for for those of us not in a uh, nonprofit background so much, um, what what are the benefits that we get out of it? 
And um, what is there like something like if we're going to the Arts Council, is there a benefit to being able to have something like a strategic plan in order for getting grant money? Oh, yeah, I, I think that's huge. I think it's it, it's a way to kind of, I think what I find in a benefit to having it consulted maybe because I've also kind of, you know, we've had experience doing things ourselves and it does really take a lot of time and there's, you know, your daily work that still needs done on top of it all. And I think that having somebody outside of this organization is going to bring like their process and their experience, you know, in this community and they're going to kind of like usher us through this so that it is efficient and there is this kind of concentrated effort that goes into specifically like visioning and strategic planning that part where it's like you know we put a lot of energy in, in whether it's the co-directors and the board working together um or separately um into like the language like i said that we understand about ourselves kind of creating this culture that we can move forward with so that we need you know, we have this kind of unification that we can present to grantors. Um, so what do you ha you have at the end of it? You have like a five-year plan, yeah, you and have I think, a document? Yeah, yeah you have a document, you? which is big. You know, the fact that something is like nicely designed and you can, you know, there might be like a, a large version and kind of the one-page version, you know, yeah. and uh, maybe you can speak to this yeah. as well. Yeah, and, and say that increasingly it's an expectation for mm -hmm. uh, for like, granting agencies, especially mm -hmm. to see that you are forward thinking, that you that you you are moving in a direction and that you have a clear vision for your organization. Um, and you, frequently what you do end up with as far as like a, a physical item is you'll have kind of a long, longer plan and then like a real nice exactly. you know, yeah. one page item that's a perfect thing to hand out to potential donors and grant granting agencies. And uh, yeah, I do think that, um, you know, you're it, you get the question all the time now. Oh, can I see your strategic plan? Like it's right. definitely okay. like increasingly an expectation on I, organizations I, like this. So I, I I think it's it's hands down. I, it has a ton of value. Um, how you go about it, you know, you can do it cheap in house and do yeah. the best you can. But knowing that's going to take up a lot of staff time and potentially our time is as or you can bring in you know somebody like this who can really help guide the process and. Uh, take on you know I, I, I'm I'm it's that number three <laughs> thing there where he he actually kind of creates the the plan itself that's potentially really valuable yeah. is three one that can be separated out because 600 doesn't seem that bad no, but looking at 450 or 200 a week I'm like Ooh. yeah I yeah. I think three the 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 actual written document would really likely come out of the work that comes exactly. in number two, two yeah. that's the critical three piece would be the yeah. mm -hmm. well and yeah. as you can see likely september and october i think that jen zach and i had and michael i think had just mentioned this that we had all kind of agreed that that section one we kind of did ourselves mm -hmm. so i don't see so much of that period mm -hmm. needing to happen anymore you know there might be a charge for like, you know, this meeting because like he has generous, he's been generous with his time. You know, he's, I think we've had at least three yeah, meetings with him. Yeah. We haven't, he hasn't yeah. charged us anything. So and and we've been talking to him for like over a year. Now. Right, we've been talking to him, you know, it would be an email. And so I, I would, you know, that he does this for a living too. So mm -hmm. we'd expect to pay him for our next meeting and whether that is a $200 meeting or something like that, that then launches us into this phase two, I think we will. And I think that I am a really attra attracted to this, this retreat time. Like mm -hmm. I said, that concentrated effort, I think that's huge for um, really looking at, you know, whether it's like, because if you think about it, you know, from the bird's eye view of the organization that, that we're now leading, there's a lot to look at. There's the mission and vision, there's the language that we use, talk about ourselves, you know, re just looking at our mission statement alone and reimagining re that. There's the finances, thinking about like what kind of plan we're going to create for fundraising and budgeting, and then of course there's like policies and procedures too, and all kinds of. Things. Would um would a strategic plan like the result be like there would be sort of a list, just nuts and bolts? -y, like these are the professional development trainings the co-directors need, you know, in in order to uh, better access youth programming. And because we know there are, but would would 
would we now get a specific thing and it's you know we know the dates and who runs them and like is it is it that level of nuts and bolts do you have a sense of that like it be, can become a just an action plan ready to go or then it bounces back to you guys to find where those trainings are and and try to match up the you know what i mean no, Nathan is definitely a resource. He's a, a Montpelier, you know, person that's done this in central Vermont. So no, it'll be also, I'm sure there will be some, as far as like, actually it won't be, I think it'll be like, you should do this through this organization. And Comprehensive and, and specific. Do, do you guys just want to play with, with um, uh, numbers for the 2023 budget? And maybe report back in October and November and saying, look, I think this comes in at three grand or six grand, you know, like, does that make sense? Yeah. Instead of us trying to pick a number out of the air tonight. So I think that what we kind of wanted out of this meeting about strategic planning is that whether there's consensus about bringing in an outside consultant so that now we can have maybe a, a bigger conversation with Nathan versus okay, if we great. feel like we have to do it yeah, in yeah, house yeah. and we, you know, it's, then that makes sense. And we could try to look at, you know, pulling whatever together to try to do that in house. I think one of the benefits of the consultant also is I think it's probably a good idea to do a community needs assessment and have him maybe do that piece because right. it is a different climate out there that maybe and it that would take a lot of time and number crunching and data and making sure that to go out to the different organizations like events and things like that so i think it might that might be a, a piece that would be money well spent so that we don't have to be out there signing people or getting surveys done yeah. And I know that he's done something similar for like the Roxbury Popular School Board where it's the, and I think that that's where I would almost like to say that I feel like that would be money well spent to see what the community thinks of us, if they think of us. <laughs> well, and I was just going to add uh, quickly that uh, I just pulled up the, the kind of feedback from Amy Cunningham at the Arts Council. Um, and one of the things I wrote that she said, you know, like quoted that I really liked, but, you know, every time you're answering these questions on grant applications, you're essentially like doing this work, right? So you're constantly like, you know, and you've probably experienced this, right? It's like you're, you're trying to tell your story over and over again. Yeah. So she said, you know, having a strategic plan shows that that actual language exists somewhere. So it's like, when they're reading this grant application, it sounds nice that you're going to try to do this with the money, but like if they had that application on top of this solid strategic plan, you know, that has, it's like data redundancy, right? It's like, it, it shows that you're doing this or at least intending to. It seems to me that we're, we actually are in this document here, we are, have a plan for a strategic plan. Right, that's what this is. <laughs> and basically part of having a strategic plan is it is impressive. It does kind of organize things. It does impress people where it's right, showing that we're a serious organization. But also we look at Facebook and we look at Twitter and realize that their strategic plan, whatever it was, you know, is in complete chaos right now because of issues that they had not anticipated ahead sure, of time. Sure. And so that we, besides, our planning, we're also in the, the world. And so a lot of what we do and what we take from this may be language and, and history, but in terms of application, it may be much more complicated than it was when we had the great American dream machine and everything was run by you know corporate America. And, and now everybody's in their own kind of wild card place. Yeah, and I agree. It's part of like, to reiterate what Rachel said, it's like it is very much this expectation in the nonprofit world too that you know <clears throat> we can all stand behind the strategic plan, right? Um, and something that we can share too. I think it's a really an accessible way to learn about an organization and what they're planning to do. And Which the the part that Jim was talking about you that you were saying was was uh, the the community needs assessment. Where is that? I'm so I don't think anymore. that it is listed on his menu item. 
And it, it sounded would, expensive. Well, that's <laughs> where it would be a conversation as part of that strategic plan. And number two, if there mm. was somewhere in there that would be um, getting, so I was almost thinking like, you know, so somewhere in there to go out to the community. And I think that when we initially had talked to Nathan about community needs assessment, that that would be an area that we would be really interested in getting his support or help with. So communicate with community, maybe in number four. Uh, so I, 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 yeah, I would definitely like to get some more clarification on that because I do think that's the most critical part and kind of the hard part. And you'll, yes. you'll see when you come to my meeting tomorrow if, if we're at all successful uh, with that. But I, just to, I personally feel like it, it would be money well spent to bring in a consultant that it sounds like it, there hasn't been a really written unit, um, strategic plan in, with this organization in a long time, if, if, any, if yeah. ever. <laughs> yeah. So that's a huge thing. Yeah. Right I think we had a so, couple of false starts. Uh, so this would be a way to nail that down and you know if if the budget can can manage it and i do think that that's a huge piece of it too is just taking a look at that i i, I think it would be money well spent to do it at this point in, in this point in time where there's so much transition going on right now right so. and are our, our co-directors looking for a motion from the board to proceed or feel like you've taken the pulse and i think we'd be ha well i think that that would your blessing would uh, give us confidence to uh, approach Nathan, you know, it's on my calendar to follow up with him and say, hey, we're ready to spend money um, accordingly and to dive into this. And then, you know, knowing that you'll be hearing from us too, because there will be board involvement. Mm -hmm. So does, uh, is there a board member uh, willing to formulate verbally uh, a motion uh, to uh, direct the co-directors uh, to move forward in negotiations with Nathan. I would make that motion. Do we need better language or? <laughs> yeah, I just battled the way there. If you want to, if you want to build it. Well, I move we that the board authorize the uh, co-directors to move forward with uh, the strategic planning consultant to. Uh, I guess I don't know what else to say beyond oh, that. I got it. Yep. Is there a second? I second it. That was Chad, right? Yes. Great. All right. All those in favor of authorizing the co-directors to move forward with Nathan, please indicate by saying aye. 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 And aye. opposed. And that's unanimous. And that brings us to just a little uh, open house annual meeting update. Let me say before we say to the end of this, um, it seems to me that part of his recommendation does involve some aspect of getting feedback from the community. So I'd like to remind us as we go into the annual meeting that there'll be a chance, maybe initiate a more sophisticated way of getting feedback from the community. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, well said. Which, which segues nicely into the uh, open house update this Friday, five to seven, be there. Yes, so uh, I think we just wanted to, again, remind everyone that the open house is happening five to seven to spread the word this Friday. There'll be Kay Sherpa uh, catering and uh, <laughs> it'll be- Not a, I was gonna say appetizers. So appetizers. <laughs> There will be screenings around the building. You know, the doors will be open. We'll be kind of give you a folks tours that haven't been here before. Um, yeah, and to just invite as many people as you'd like to just pop in. Hunt. Scavenger hunt, it's raffle. Fun, yeah, we're gonna try to yeah, raffle away uh, some of the new t-shirts if you haven't seen them. Um, and let's see, well, I guess judging on the timing of the Plaque. We're hoping to also make the announcement of regarding the studio being named the John Block Memorial Studio. Um, and so we're excited about that. Um, yeah. And good. Christopher did reach out to. Rebecca will be there. She said if she can, but she's honored and she knows John will be honored as well. So. And the, and the John Block Studio. Yes. Um, if 
the building gets sold out from under it. The sign comes we'll with a still sign. Be sign with us. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's an organization. I just want to make sure yeah. it isn't any yeah. way site specific. No, no, no. Yeah. It's just, <laughs> it's, it's, I think the sign will say like at Orphan Media or it's part of Orphan Media. Yeah. No, All right. We're, we're not going to. Thank you. No, I just didn't want to make, I feel John's turning over in his grave <laughs> as, as they sell away the from the place. Yeah. Where <laughs> and I think we, Potentially, we'll make an announcement about a potential community producer award that we'll have more details around for also honoring John Brock and uh, what what that means exactly. We'll, you know, maybe there will be announcements to look forward to. Stay tuned. Um, well, of course, we, we could, in his honor, use our new uh, organization as Blocks. I'm in the outreach block. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. We don't have to do that. E L O C H. -E. <laughs> um, I see you guys have a final agenda item: upcoming events. This one I pulled from our video, and when you were listing out the agenda items for the special ones, there was an agenda uh, uh, to talk about upcoming events, but I don't know that we have any, and I added it to the agenda just in case there was something specific okay. that was referenced well, in there. I'll, I'll, type, I'll type under the, the um, that agenda item on the minutes that next board meeting is October 25th. Sorry, I've been saying 4th, but the 25th is the Tuesday, it looks like. And uh, we will need to elect officers. Beyond that, I didn't have any um, thoughts on upcoming events. Anyone else? That may give us uh, a complete meeting. The next board meeting is October 25. That, that fourth Tuesday is the 25th, right? Nope. Yeah. Nope. Yep. Yep. Yes. yep, it's good. Okay, yep. And so that'll be uh, election of officers and then otherwise a typical board meeting. And then just timelining this out, the, the end of the year meeting, the December one would be a presentation of budget. So um, potentially this October one may have a little bit of a preview, like if you figured out with Nathan, how much you'll need to budget for or any anything like that as you go forward um, um, you know budgeting 2023 fully under the co-director model if you run into any headaches with that that would be also a good time but otherwise a, a straightforward back to normal agenda board meeting and uh, you know I'd, I'd, I'd I'd take a motion to adjourn. It looks like 802 if anyone wants to say that out loud. A motion to adjourn. I haven't gotten to make a motion yet. <laughs> yeah, I got that. Was that Rachel's second? Yeah, sure. <laughs> All right. All right. In favor of closing it out tonight at 802, indicate by saying aye. Aye. And opposed. Great. That was uh, super efficient and informative and much appreciated everyone.